Uh, you're back with Bloomberg Markets as we have a look at uh, India as it approves incentives worth something like $10 billion over six years for the development of semiconductors and display manufacturing. The government believing that the move will help ease the shortage of microchips and make it a global chip manufacturing hub. Well, let's discuss with Ashwini Vaishnoa, India's Minister of Railways, Communications and Electronics, as well as Information Technology Minister. Good to have you with us. Huge incentives, $10 billion. Will that be enough to attract the big boys, the likes of Tata Group, to get into chip manufacturing? Good morning. Uh, if you look at the package, see, $10 billion any other country could have given. What is it that we have given different in this package? So there are, there's a complete ecosystem that we are developing, not just the fabs, but also the entire talent ecosystem which is required, the design ecosystem which is required. That's the primary component of this package. So this $10 billion will go towards uh, two silicon fabs, two display fabs, and about 15 compound semiconductor units and packaging units, packaging which is uh, ATMP and OSAT units, plus about 100 design companies. We already have, a, have an ecosystem of about 50,000 design engineers working in India, and also to create 85,000 semiconductor engineers over a period of next 10 years. Yeah. Uh, Minister, which companies have expressed interest? What's been the response? So the response so far has been very good. All the big players, all the significant players are in talks with Indian partners. Many of them are directly uh, wanting to come and uh, set up their units here. So the interest so far is very good. All, almost all the big ones are talking to us. Uh, Minister, also just give us a sense here also of, you know, the, the type of chips you want to be getting involved with. Will it be the whole gamut? Will it be the high end? Uh, what exactly are you looking at? Bulk of it is going to be in that 28 nanometer to 45 nanometer, which is the which is a mature technology today. But we are, we are going to request the uh, intending players to give us a roadmap for going uh, going for chips which are better than 28 nanometers. I, I, I just want to just move right now also and have a look at what's going on in uh, the telecom space a little bit too. Uh, you know, Vodafone idea, you know, has been teetering on uh, uh, on bankruptcy for a while now, but, you know, you've introduced some recent reforms. Tell us a little bit about them and do you think it's going to give them a fresh lease of life? I'm talking about the telcos, not specifically Vodafone idea. So last September, we had uh, nine structural reforms and about six uh, procedural reforms in the telecom sector. And that has uh, really uh, kind of removed so many obstacles that the industry had. And many of the litigations that we had have been removed. Some of the big legacy issues like the uh, retro tax and the definition of uh, uh, the revenue definition, all those things, the AGR definition, they have been removed from the system, from the statute book. This has really brought back that uh, vitality in the Indian telecom market. I think it will increase competition. And going forward, we are going to benchmark our regulation with the global best. Uh, Minister, before I pick up on your point to do with uh, the telecom sector, just a, a, a quick question here on the chip sector. How soon do you think you can scale and how realistic is it that you can be on par with other players, the likes of Taiwan? Okay, so in the compound semiconductor, which is what goes into automobiles, power electronics, telecom equipment, all that stuff in railway engines, those units we expect to to get them approved within next three to four months. In fact, last week the cabinet approved the policy, and uh, within seven days, our ministry has already notified all the schemes, and we are starting to take the applications from first jab. So that is the speed and commitment with which we are working under Prime Minister Modi ji's guidance. So. We believe that the design companies, the packaging companies, and the compound semiconductors should be approved within next three to four months. The display and silicon fabs will take slightly longer, maybe five to six months time frame. Um, 
we are starting from, so it's a thousand mile journey. So, and this is the first step. It will take us uh, some more time to uh, mature this industry because this is a very complex, the entire ecosystem, getting the supply chain in place, right. getting the complex gases, the complex uh, liquids, which are uh, required for manufacturing, ultra pure water, all that is going to be a learning curve, yes. So you talk about the ecosystem. I mean, when you take a look at the next two to three years, how do you see this ecosystem developing? Excellent question. Next two to three years time frame, we see at least 10 or 12 smaller units, the compound semiconductors going into production. We see at least the display fab going into production or maybe finalizing the completion work. The silicon fab would be somewhere in the middle of its completion in, in its construction phase is what we see today. The design companies, we see that at least 50 or 60 design companies would have started uh, designing the products. And we also see that by in two to three years, we would have had at least out of the 60 institutions that we are targeting for semiconductor engineers, at least 20 to 30 engineer uh, institutions would have created the programs for developing those engineers. Let's just have a look now also at, uh, going back to the telecom, telecom side of things, you know, you had that 4G auction a few years ago and, you know, you weren't able to raise quite as much money as you hope. 5G, of course, is uh, coming up. Do you think that 5G, of course, can change the fortunes of telecommunications companies? And also tell me something, what have you got in line for these 5G auctions? What sort of figures are you looking at uh, and monies to raise? Okay, so <clears throat> COVID has shown that Spectrum is not just a revenue maximization exercise. It's a resource which also has an element of public good. So right now, the uh, Indian regulator TRI, T-R-A-I, they are right now undergoing the consultations with uh, the industry and all of the stakeholders. We expect that the recommendation should come somewhere middle of March or end of March uh, 22. And we believe that uh, this time, the pricing would be reasonable. And also we believe that since the CapEx cycle is huge, at least two to three years is the capital investment cycle for setting up the new network. So there would be, uh, we hope it will be a very reasonable ground. And we are, we are in constant touch with the industry. Well, you may be in constant touch with the industry, but you talk about the infrastructure for 5G. The, the biggest player in that infrastructure is actually Huawei. Will Huawei remain banned and be forbidden from uh, taking part in all this? And if so, who are you looking at to build? Okay, so um, we have new geopolitical realities, right? This world is going through a total churn in which we are all trying to find good, trusted sources. What I would like to... Um, uh, keep you informed here, and I've been publicly telling this, that the entire 5G technology stack, which includes the core network, which includes the radio network, which includes telecom equipments, entire system, Indian developers and Indian manufacturers have been gearing up, have been developing, and we are on course to have a proper world class, which would be at least a notch better than the global best that we have today by somewhere end of uh, 22 calendar year. Uh, we are well on track for that. So that, that gives us uh, better strength. Uh, Minister, as we speak, uh, all governments are looking at uh, data security. There's been a crackdown pretty much uh, across the board. As we talk about telecom, as we talk about chip manufacturing, how is India looking at the two issues? Where do you find that balance? Um, that's a very, very important question. I would like to say, put it like this. The whole world is today thinking that, okay, we had a great technology which has given a platform which is available to everybody. Now, the question is, are the, is the platform being rightly used or is there, a, is there an element of misuse of the platform? So societies across the globe are today thinking that we need to get a right balance, which basically means that the ownership of the content should 
should also take the owner of the content should also take the responsibility for correct content that is item number one two on the privacy part of uh, data almost there is a good consensus all over the world and we have also uh, prepared a bill which has which went to the joint committee of the parliament and the joint committee has given its recommendations so we are we are also looking at an enactment of a bill which will be looking at uh, protecting the personal data that is the second element and the third element is what is the interplay of big tech with democracy which is very uh, important for society like india we are a, we are a, a dem, uh, we are a democracy and we rightly believe we truly believe in that so these are the things which need a balance which need a global consensus i would say that time has come when the societies across the globe should come across and form a consensus on this Minister, I just want to actually get back to the question I asked you about Huawei. You didn't really give a clear response to it. Let's put it this way. If relations were to improve between Delhi and Beijing, would Huawei be allowed uh, to do business there in India with that 5G contract I was talking, we were talking about? So, um, let me put it this way. We have developed a trusted source regime. Uh, this trusted source regime basically takes into account all the geopolitical realities that we face today. If that trusted source regime basically selects the equipments that you are, man that you are mentioning, then there is no issue. Question is, um, your question is a very direct question, but can I give a direct answer? Maybe not. So what is the direct well, answer? In terms, of, uh, in terms of digital platforms, the likes of uh, Twitter and Facebook, Minister, where do you stand in terms of how closely they should be regulated? So I would uh, exactly say the same thing, that we all need to come to a consensus that, let's say, so uh, human beings, we have a implicit faith in a written word. If there's something written somewhere, we generally believe, I mean, it's a natural thing which has evolved over so many uh, centuries. If there is a written word, we have a tendency to believe it. Now, if somebody tries to put a absolutely fake news on a, one of the very popular uh, platforms, then people tend to believe it. So we need to have that first self-regulation. And if self-regulation is not sufficient, then the governments will have to step in. Societies will have to step in. Because the future of our children, the future of our societies, the future of our democracy depends upon right. having that right balance. Minister, thank you so much for your time. Ashwini Vaishnav, Indian Minister of Railways, Communications and Electronics and IT. Now, let's